Every zoo that I went to in the world, all the gorillas look at me and they go crazy. You can laugh, it's okay. Are you serious? Yeah, so I'll go up to them and like I'll mess with them and like they all come to the glass and they all do this. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fantastic, everything's kosher. Here we go, another live show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. Thank you for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. If you are not subscribed, do me a favor, pause this video. I will wait and hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you. Now you're watching this at home, but there's a lot of people watching this live right now. Caleb, you wanna do a little 180 with the camera. We have 250 distributors here in Las Vegas. Let's go. Let's go. This is Impulsive's second live show, so uh, we are going to mess up, but it is live. You get to see it. It'll be highly entertaining, and we have an amazing guest for you guys today. I have an intro for him. I don't want to keep him waiting. He is a busy guy. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today is one of the greatest NBA players of all time, but it's his time off the court that's helped him become one of the top five wealthiest players, players the league has ever produced. From investments, brand deals, franchise ownership, his portfolio is stock full of wins and only continues to grow. He's in Vegas for the event in support of his foundation that creates pathways for underserved youth to help them achieve their full potential. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Shaquille O'Neal. He's gonna have to come around the front. Look at those <laughs> pants. Those are awesome, bro. Let's go. Wow. Let's go. Wow. What's up, big What's dog? up, brother? So this might, be, this might be a little clunky uh, because, again, it is a live show. So just let me know if the, the, the audio works, the headphones fit your head. <laughs> so far, so good. All that money you're making, you couldn't get a bigger stage? Hey, we've been complaining about it for a while. <laughs> Not as What's much as you, man. <laughs> Hello, everyone. What's up, brother? So how are you? I can't complain. I'm just you know, taking it easy. For sure, dude. We have been trying to get you on this podcast. So long. For so long. So long. Finally, you're here. Hold on, let me see if the check cleared. <laughs> <laughs> the check has it. Oh, yeah, it has it. Cleared. The check cleared. It's cleared. Nah, we, uh, we tried to get you on one time before, but we had Oliver Tree Do on. me a favor, close your legs while you're talking to me. I don't want to see. <laughs> Turn that way. You see him? Well, he's like, he's like hey, Whoa, dude, you almost slapped your dick in my face, bro. You can't make a joke like that. Hey, geez, just close your legs, the that little boy that. shorts you got on. That was wrong with me. I was I was told this is fashion. Do you, do you know that the shorts are getting higher? No, no, I do not. Why do know you that. look more like a dad than Shaq does? <laughs> With these high, <laughs> <I'm so right. laughs> you do look like a dad. What are you talking about? Is it the glasses? These are new. Yeah, I, I know. I see the Jeffrey Dahmer joints. What are you <laughs> going on? Yeah. What did I do wrong? You've been watching Netflix. <laughs> so have I. I'm on episode six right now. <laughs> hey, hey. He's, he's the star yeah. of the show. I'm just, I'm just getting toasted. Yeah, no, they're, uh, it's a low prescription. It's not just for style. Okay. But. My, I, I, was, I was actually speaking here earlier in front of all these people, and this is funny, guys. I actually said the Staples Center is in London, like I'm, and some of you may have caught that. It's in Los Angeles. Um, it's because I can see your faces now. Like, I can't see faces like this, and I'm used to speaking like this. And when I do this, I, just, I realized so many people were looking at me. <laughs> So well, what do you, think, my train what do you usually think's happening if you don't have the glasses on I don't, looking I, at the wall? I don't think about it. You're, you're used to performing, obviously, in front of groups of people, man. And, and so yes, I am. Do you get any nerves when you, when you come up here to do stuff like this? No, not at all. Just have fun. You know, I like to, I like to make people laugh. And, you know, I like to make people feel good. Because these guys, you know, I know that these are the Anheuser-Busch people. Am I correct? Oh, yeah. So, so they, have, they have real jobs. Get up at 8. Yeah. Work all day, orders all that, and come home at five. Like us, we get to just do whatever we want to do. So, I really respect people like this because this was a, uh, our moms, our dad. So, I just try to, you know, they're here in Vegas having a good time. So, while we're here for an hour, just want to make them laugh. Let's chop it up, dude. Hell yeah! <clears throat> real jobs out there making real money and coming to Vegas just to lose it. Are you gambling here? No, sir. I'm not a gambling man. Ever. Ever. Why not? I'm trying to keep. The definition of money is not how much you make; it's how much you keep. <laughs> yeah, all right. Fastest dollar earned is the dollar yeah, saved. Exactly. So I've heard. Yeah, but surely, surely you, you never go put a thousand on a number in roulette. No, never. 
I, I used to when I was your age, but now that I'm a dad, I have to relax. I got you. I but, got it, you. but it is Sin City. You, you surely have some vice when you're here in Vegas. Nothing. What do you do after you get finished spinning at the end of the night? Do you think I'm going to tell all these people what the hell I do? <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> no, I don't go to strip clubs either, so don't ask me that. Hey, Shaq, you do, you do so much stuff, man. Like, like I, I, walk into, I walked into a, where was I, like a state, an office max? And I think I saw you, a giant cut out of you with a printer. Then I turn on the TV, you're doing an ad. You're part of it, the Authentic Brand Group's ABG. Yes. But, but correct me if I'm wrong, ABG bought the rights to you? Do they, how does that work? They brought the rights to have to uh, have for my likeness. Because when I was a youngster, you know, like when you're watching basketball and, you know, you see Larry Bird, and Magic Johnson, and, you know, Air Jordan. I said to myself, I want to have a name like that. And I realized I did have a name like that, Shaquille mm -hmm. O'Neal. So, you know, going into this and, you know, I, I, I said to myself, when I'm done playing, I, I want to still be relevant. I want to still be, you know, looked at. You know, like Muhammad Ali, Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, those names live forever. So in order to do that, I had to, I had to sign, partner with the company such as Authentic Brands Group. And, you know, we've been doing really big things. Do you feel like you needed to sign with a company like ABG to, in order for that legacy to happen with your name? Uh, yes and no. You know, I got, a, I got like five guys who were doing a fabulous job, but to get on the worldwide stage, you know, I, I had to partner with somebody. But, yeah. you, but you also own a large percentage of ABG shares as well, correct? So it kind of works both I, ways. I don't know. I, I don't I don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's like, I don't want to sit here and talk about what I own and what right, I do. Right. It's not what these people came to hear. I'm just, I'm fortunate to have done a, a, a JV, a joint venturship with the company. And, and I just wanted my name to live forever. You see that desire to have a long lasting legacy, even after you leave the sport is kind of a strategic, like a high level business thought. Did you always have that propensity to, to do business at a, at a younger age or was that something that you kind of grew into? No, we, I had to, I had to develop it. You know, my father was a drill sergeant. So the way he raised me was through horror stories. Uh, it's, it's a, no, no, it's a, it's a true fact that 65 to 70% of all professional athletes when they're done three to five years after their plan have nothing. Yeah. And I used to always, so every time an athlete did something crazy, I would get in trouble. Right, so, no seriously, uh, true story, when I was 12, 13, my father came home one, one day and he was, he was crying. And he said, if I ever catch you messing with Coke, I will kill you. So I'm 13, I'm like, Dad, I'm a Pepsi guy. <laughs> <laughs> no seriously, but, but, but he wasn't playing. So it was a guy by the name of Lynn Byers, I don't know if you're familiar with the name. He was gonna be the number one pick. And my father died like Lynn was my brother. Like he cried so hard, so I, like I was always, you know, whenever people would make a mistake, he would he would use those stories to teach me, and then he would end it. If I catch you doing this, I will kill you. <laughs> no, seriously. So if the drugs don't kill you, I yeah, will. Exactly. So I always had to, you know, focus on education, focus on business, and then, you know, when you're in the NBA, it's it's, it's a it's a fantasy world, but you live you, you get to live a good life, and if you are responsible, you can continue to live that life. As you see, I got on pajamas. I don't really have a job. <laughs> That's, that's because when I was 18, going into 19, 20, 30, I listened to my parents because they always said, hey, man, education, education, business, 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 partnership, partnerships, relationships, uh, be respectful and do the right thing. I'm nowhere near being a parent yet. Actually, you know what? I don't know if that's true. That's but not I'm what I heard. <laughs> I'm not a parent yet, but um, I, I fear that if... Uh, I try to be strict, like your dad was with you. They'll just rebel, right? I I, I feel like a lot of times kids it's, are reactive. It's different. So you know, my my kids are gated community gangsters. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so listen, when I was growing up, there was a lot of trials and tribulations. So he had to he had to be like that. And you know, his 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 basic thing was, I want you to be a leader, and not a follower. Hmm. So he had to be. Right. But my kids not like that. And I have six wonderful children. I don't have any problems with, with uh, my children. I tell them all the time, we don't need another basketball player. Mm. It's six of y'all. Somebody give me law school, somebody give me hedge fund. I got one daughter that's a, a, a marketing director at uh, Pepsi. So listen, I just want you, you know, education, have fun, be yourself. And I tell them, and, you know, they, they kind of got mad at this, but I say, in order to touch daddy's cheese, you gotta have three degrees. 
That's a lot of degrees. <laughs> yeah, because I believe in because I believe in respectable nepotism. Mm. You know, I was with the Miami Heat one day, and the article came out. The grandmother left leaves the son two hundred fifty million dollars, right? So I, I didn't think nothing of it because it's a rich family. So I go in the locker room one day to shoot, and this kid's on his knees scrubbing the bathroom floor, and I'm looking at him I'm like. Hey, man, didn't your grandmother just give you 250 million? Yeah, but dad wants me to start from the bottom. So he had to do that. He was picking up jocks, and he was, you know, he started in the marketing department, and now I think he's the vice president. Once I saw that, I was like, you know what? That right there is respectable nepotism. Because the kid went to Duke, his grandma gave him 250. He could have been like, I'm not doing anything. But his dad said, nope, you start from the bottom. So that's, that's what I also teach my kids. And I also have to teach them. We're not rich. I'm rich. I love that. I love that line so much. Yes, <laughs> Daddy, yeah. we're rich. Yeah, they're, you know my, you know my oldest son. He's yep. he's he's very smart. And it was kind of my fault. I said, my man, if you if you get all A's this next semester, you can get whatever you want. Mm. So he gets all A's, and I was like, go to the dealership and pick one. Then I get a call from Tesla. I said, man, you better take your ass across the street to Honda. <laughs> no, but, he was no, trying but, to save you money yeah, on gas. Yeah, but, <laughs> I'm not buying you no damn Tesla. <laughs> but no. like, but it is like father likes. Hold on, yeah. you ain't gonna ask me a question. <laughs> oh, damn. He waits. He likes to wait until Jeez. he's got the Bro, you question. tapped me in play mode and I broke my hand. What happens if I ask the wrong question <laughs> and you punch me? Um, nah, I'm, I'm actually, I, I'm just you taking. You wear short shorts. <laughs> I'm, t- <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, they're making a resurgence. You know what? Hold on, I'm also just. I don't even have. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, I, so I'm so sorry. Uh, now you gotta say something. Man. Listen, man, I, I read the Bible a lot when they talk about David and Goliath. I've never seen a giant, and so like I've li- I'm literally just I'm a little taken. You've been sitting over here for thirty minutes, and that's all you can freaking say. <laughs> <laughs> fucking kidding me. Now he's not gonna say That's the question. Jeez. I didn't. I, I'm just sitting. I'm. I. Are you have, drunk? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We're gonna get Edgy George later tonight. <laughs> Is I have one question. Is okay, there any chance you. I can for two seconds put these up? So I can hear what's going on. Take them all. You don't have to ask Why the producer. Asking just take things off. Okay. You've been on this show. I feel like I just fucked up everybody's vibe. No, you did. So they love it. I'm like right next to them, but I can't hear anything in this. So I've been like he's trying. And then the podcast? worst. Let's he's give he, George a round of applause. Real quick. Get guy. him back. Get Hello, him back he, in the game. He's your partner. He's the newest. You might want to give him his two week notice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Dude. Honestly, Jeez. no, it's not how it works in this show. You don't even get a two week notice. I, you're fired, brother. I, I, uh, <laughs> speak. No, Stop. come on, Georgie. The audience loves. They love. They love how awkward he is. No, I just couldn't hear you guys. I'm the closest one in the room, but I could not hear a okay. word. So I was just doing this. So now that you can hear any question, you have a question for Shaq. Yeah, can we fucking move on so I can like <laughs> so I can jump in? This is like double dutch, but hey, everybody's hey, pointing at you. I, I know it is obnoxious, but I mean, sh- you're huge. You're massive. When did you realize, like, oh, I'm, I'm still growing and I am going to be much bigger stop. than literally everyone around me? Age three. <laughs> no, so age 10. I wasn't far. Because my father taught me all sports, you know, boxing, football, baseball, basketball. Mm. So we beat this team one time, like, 100 to, to four. Mm. Right? Isn't there a mercy rule? No, so it's 100 to four. No, there was no mercy rule. And I remember this kid, his father running on the court. And upset. He said, no way this kid is 10. If he's 10, he's going to be the best basketball player ever. No way. And my father was so happy. My father said, see, see, see if you listen to me. So shortly after that, I went to the Knicks game. And I see my favorite guy in the world, Dr. J. He goes baseline and the crowd goes crazy. And I always had to address my father as sir. So, you know, he would, he would, he would always say, like he would always train me and I would always wimp out. And he'd be like, you're not ready. Get away from me. Mm. But after that moment, I saw Dr. J and I was like, sir, I think I know what I want to be. I want to be an NBA player. And he says to me, 12 years old, if you listen to me, I'll make you one of the best big men ever. No way. And he said it, and he, he had so much, you know, he had a tear in his eye. So I, I had to believe him. So uh, at 12, I knew it was bigger than everybody else. And he just, he, he just taught me to be mean and ferocious. Taught me to bow people in the face, kick them, throw them down, and just, you know, do whatever. I can't imagine you kicking or throwing me down. I wouldn't do that to you. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> but him on nah, the I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, I, I knew, knew it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the way your guy laughed like that. No, he, he wants you to get hit. You already know what I'm going to say. 
NASCAR, baby. Every single Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, it is the NASCAR playoffs. Fast cars, wrecks, fights, and all of the action anyone could ask for. It might be the end of the season, but the intensity just started. This weekend, NASCAR is back at Charlotte Motor Speedway. So strap in for a wild ride as the stars of NASCAR Cup Series take on Charlotte as it's an elimination race going from 12 to 8 drivers all vying for their spot to become a champion. NASCAR always delivers an action-packed race full of lead changes, wild wrecks, and close finishes that will keep you on the edge of your seat the entire race. You have to experience NASCAR in person, person so be sure to not miss the action and go to nascar.com slash tickets to get your tickets today. And if you cannot make the race, tune in and get ready to take a better, or to get ready to take a beer, better <laughs> beer shower at the finish line with NASCAR Charlotte Motor Speedway this Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern on NBC. I'm back to the show. You had that same moment with uh, with two of your sons, right? Coming up to you saying, "This is what I want to do for a living." Is that was cool. it two two of your sons, right? Wanted to play ball for a Who's living. That? You got sons, Miles. Oh, two of my sons. Yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. two ear sons. Sucks like, when you can't hear, huh? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> two, yeah, I just look. I I teach them how to play. I want them to have fun. I want them to follow their dreams. But it's no pressure. You know, I, I was taught that pressure is when you don't know where your next meal is coming from. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of stories that you know. Hopefully, people could relate to. So, f rookie year, we're playing the New York Knicks, and I have a terrible game. And I get a call on my phone. My father he says, "Get your ass home right now." So I, I get home. I land late, and you know, I don't want to talk to you. Be here tomorrow at 0500. If you don't, I'm gonna knock your ass out. 0500 is 5 a.m. Yep. So I'm I'm, in, I'm there at 5 a.m. He's already dressed, and we get in the car and we ride. And I was like, well, what? Shut the hell up. We're just riding. So I come across this homeless family that he always takes care of. He gives them money, gives them clothes, whatever. And we're just looking for an hour. He said, what happened in the game yesterday? I said, man, I don't know. I let the pressure get to me. He was pissed. You spoiled mother effer making all this money. You talking about pressure. Da, da, da. This is pressure where you don't know where your next meal is coming from. Get out. I'm like, what do you mean get out? Get out. I knew what he wanted me to do, but I was like, okay. So now it was a guy, his wife, and two kids. I can't have him laying on the street. So I went and talked to the guy, nice guy. He said, look, man, I just lost my job. I just got down on some hard time. But he was he was very dedicated. He's like, but I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back. I said, oh, all right, hold on. Jake, yeah, what's happening? You still got them uh, uh, apartments that you're building? Yeah, well, I need a three-bedroom apartment today. How much? $3,000, 36000 I'm going to wire the money. So now I'm, I got him off the streets, right? I gave him, that. Gave him some cash, you know, for the clothes and stuff. And then I asked the guy, I said, well, what do you like to do? He said, man, I'll do whatever. Hey, Tony, you still got that lawn service? Hey, you like to cut grass? You got that lawn service? I'm going to send the guy over, boom, 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 make sure he get paid, whatever. I'll pay you back. So got the guy off the street, got him started. Two years after that, the guy started his own lawn service. He was cutting my grass in Orlando. I had to let him go last month because I sold my house in Orlando. But pressure to me is when you don't know where your next meal is coming from. So I, I try not to complain. I try not to use that word pressure. So I always tell my kids, just go play, have fun. If you make it, cool. If you don't, I understand. But you must have an education because respectable nepotism is the way that we can go. It's really interesting how, how you're, you're parenting the opposite style of your parents. But it worked for you. Because I was a high-level juvenile delinquent. High level. No, really. I was a, I was a follower, and I got disciplined so much to the point until until that Dr. J moment. Once that Dr. J moment came, I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna start being a leader, and I'm gonna start listening because I, I I was very very mischievous. Was there ever a time where, like, I I know what it's like to have a hard ass dad. Same with him. Same with him. Was there ever a time where you have to? <laughs> Why don't you think I talk, sir? <laughs> because you don't, sir. <laughs> Just looking at me very weird. <laughs> That's George for you. Yeah. But uh, was there ever a time where you had to, 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 to press your dad a little bit? Yeah. And so he, we was uh, doing business, and he didn't like a decision that I made, and I kind of bucked up at him, and he's like, <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's cool. No, it's not from the Middle East. No, and he says to me exactly what I've been waiting for. Sick. Yeah. It's it's, like, it's, for sure, it's a moment. No, my dad said the same thing, except for he beat my ass right afterwards. He was like, <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting for this, and just beat because the we, shit out of it. True story. It was uh, my, we're negotiating with Reebok, and the guy comes in and he says, 
Ten million dollars for four years. Here's the contract. Don't even look at it. He puts the contract down. My father goes off. You mother. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like. So I had to explain. I was like, that's not how you do business. Blah, blah, blah. I was yeah. like, that's not how you do business. Let me handle it. <laughs> Just what I'm gonna wear. I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna let you negotiate the deal, big man. So, you know, he was teaching me that. And you know, once I stood up to him, he, he said, you know what? You're the man of the house, and it's all yours now. Because what always made me stay motivated, I realized my parents never owned a house. The family never owned a house. We all grew up in project building. So I'm like, I gotta get my mom a new house. Mm. I gotta, I gotta get her a new house. One, one time we was riding in San Antonio. We was riding through neighborhoods, and you know what? The house wasn't much, four hundred thousand dollar house. But she just stopped and like she's looking at the house. And I said to myself, I'm gonna get my mother a house. I'm gonna get her a mansion. I'm gonna get her whatever she wants. So that was always part of my motivation. So first thing I did when I got drafted, I bought them a house and I said, okay, here it is. I put you guys on salary. Never have to worry anything. Dad, I need you to retire from the army. Work for me now. You got your own my own fan club. I need you to run it. Thank you for everything. I'll take it from here. And you know, my father was very proud. He was like, hey, I'm 65, I can retire. You can take care of the family, and he had a tear in his eye. So cool, man. Not a lot of people get to do that for their parents. Yep. Yeah. I want to talk about basketball a little bit. When you first shattered a rim or a backboard, <laughs> <laughs> what was going through your head? Because had that happened before at that so, point? So a, a, a lot of stories go back to my father. Mm. I know he passed away about nine years ago, but I think about him all the time. So I was, you know how the guys play now, the big guys play yeah. soft? That was me. Mm. Cause I wanted to be Magic Johnson. I was smooth, right? So one time I had 45 points in halftime and I go to finger roll and I miss. And my father calls a timeout. He comes on the court, timeout, call a timeout. I was like, wait a minute again, call a fucking timeout. Yes, sir. So he takes me outside. He said, what are you doing? I said, man, I'm working on my Dr. J stuff. Fuck Dr. J, you be Shaq. So I was so mad at him. No, sir, I was so mad at him. I, I told the guys, I said, don't nobody shoot, give me the ball. And I was just trying to tear the rim down because I was mad at him. But when, when I was doing that, I realized that I was intimidating everybody else. And he was like, see, if you play like this, everybody be you know, intimidated and the game will be much easier. So every time I went up to dunk, I, I, I gave the appearance like I was trying to tear the backboard down. But it, it was a great feeling. I mean, you just rip a backboard down. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> Ask a question, jeez. You you do have to I ask actually one. do. I have Thank one. you. I have one. <laughs> Is it going to be uh, basketball? Because I, I want to stay with nah, basketball. Nah, I'm, for a, a I'm, gonna, I'm gonna relate it to your father because I have a lot of respect for this. Because like I'm 29 years old and I've done a lot of my life, but whatever my parents say goes, regardless of my age, regardless of my stature. I I honor my mom and father, and they they're the reason why I'm here today. But recently, oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> he's hey, so if he's bad. gonna fucking clap, you guys better clap. I'm, I'm texting while you're shit question. No, because you're very very intelligent. You're just sitting here like a bobblehead, going. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm question. so sorry. I want I didn't okay. want to interrupt you because no, I, I couldn't ahead. hear. But go ahead. Uh, I actually recently just got into it with my with my dad, and so what you need to do when you leave here, just call him and tell him you love him. That's it. Nothing to talk about. Oh, wow. Doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. Dad, I love you and I respect you and I'll see you when I get home. Because one of the biggest mistakes I made, and I talked about this the last two years, is because I work a lot, so it's easy to go, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'll do it tomorrow. So one day I get a call, my sister's no longer with us. So I'm already down you know, from that, and then I get another call, hey man, Kobe Bryant just passed away. And all I had to do was pick up the phone and say, hey, I miss you. Hey, I love you. Hey, what you doing? So after we get off this, don't go hang with these guys. Go in the back room, call your father, say, Dad, I love you. Everybody's going to have arguments. You're going to have fights, but I know you have respect for your father. You know, sometimes when we get older, we think they don't know what they're talking about, but just just listen to what he's saying. If you agree, do it. If you don't agree, just respect what he's Say, Dad, I don't agree, but you don't need to be fighting and going long distance, you know, without talking to your dad. So after this, just call him and tell him you love him. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank yep. you so much. Fantastic. Now it's hard to get back into basketball. <laughs> nice job, George. Ah, <laughs> you were the big guy. You were the 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 big guy. Uh, you know, closest closest to the rim, getting in trouble, pushing people around. Who gave you the most trouble in in the uh, in the scene? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> because if I didn't play well, my mother would lose her house. Not really, but yeah, that's how I played. There had to be somebody. No, you nobody. Ain't nobody, nobody. No, because you know what? Those guys never really played me one-on-one. -on -one. 
Actually, actually, the little guys because they would they they get better, you know, positioning like Charles Oakley and Barkley and Malone. They they would give me problems, but not really. But big guys, nobody. When but, you said little, I was thinking like, no, like Peyton the, or Starks or something. No, no, that like, you're talking no, about no, like six, eight, six, nine, like you know, put yeah, the, the, the little guys. <laughs> yeah. And was it always going to be basketball? By the way. Yes. Well, no, football first, and then a guy named John Concak. You know who that is. Uh-uh. So you guys know John Concak. So he was in, uh, I was in high school and he signed 15 for three. And my father went to see me watch him play. He was okay, but I think I was better at that point in high school. Because when I was coming up in, in 1988, I wrote on, on my wall, I want eight million for 10 years. That's how the money was. I want to yeah. make eight million dollars for 10, like I had it all planned out. 800,000 a year, my house, my mama house, I'm gonna get me a Benz, I'm gonna get a Jimmy Blazer, get a house in Texas. but. When I seen him sign 15 for three, I was like, this guy's making 15, I could at least make 20. Yeah. So then, you know, a couple guys came out and, you know, made a lot of money before me. And so when I came out, I asked for 50. I didn't get 50, I got 40. Who's that singing? Who the is fuck that is that Backstreet, Backstreet Boys? Boys right now? I love how he looked well, at me like, like he's just oh, wanted oh, to be oh. bad at me. Like I was singing no, like, Backstreet on, Boys while he's talking. I, I want to know who it is. Stop. No, no, no. Bring them out here. Make them yeah, perform it. Make them perform it in front of everyone. Grab them, grab them, Cap. Seriously. If you want to sing Backstreet Boys, you do it in front of everyone. Right here. Uh, everybody. But like, <laughs> yeah, we've sang that on the show before. It's a fantastic song. You got a top three? Top three NBA what? NBA all time. All right, you know what? No, 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 no. No, it's, it, it, it's hard to talk. It's hard to name a top three. It really is. It's I know you got a top one. He's probably sitting on the stage right now. No, I'm, no I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't rate myself the best ever. But I have, but I have a question for you. Yes, sir. And the panel. When LeBron passes up Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in points, and he will this year, yep. will that make him the greatest player ever? Okay. An interesting question. I, I think the greatest player is uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, that's what I think. But I agree. LeBron's, LeBron is about to do something that hasn't been done in a long time, and I think he will move his name up there but but for me it's always like it, for me it's always dr j and michael jordan you I'm, know magic and those guys i might get flamed for this but dude i'm from cleveland so i gotta go with lebron see that's what i was gonna ask do you ever do people ever call you like an old head like you don't respect the the new school you don't you don't look at lebron and what he's doing now and, and no I, I do i do look at lebron but i also like listening to you know pe- people's opinions yep absolutely Listen, Jordan was was the greatest in my opinion, and he's, he likes LeBron. That's his opinion. But you know, when when people look at stats, right? So you know, his stats are definitely going to be up there. And to to have pass up Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I, I can truthfully say I'm jealous of that feat because I wanted to pass up. I was like fifteen hundred points behind Wilt Chamberlain. Chamberlain. I wanted to pass up Wilt Chamberlain because then I was going to going to arrogantly say I am the most dominant big man ever, and I don't want to hear anybody else's name. So now when you talk about most dominant, you bring Wilt, Bill, and Shaq. It, it's cool, but I wanted to be up there by myself. There's just something like subjective about it too. Like it's like you look at the stats, but there's just, I don't know, that feeling MJ used to give you when you would watch him at the top of the key. You know, it's two, yeah, three, I was, two. He's the only. Sink that shot. He's the only man that had me terrified on, on the court. Because I went from high school, admiring him, college, admiring him, admiring him, and then he's right there in front of you. And, all the shit you see on your poster, like he's doing it in real life. Like he came by me so fast one time, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, yeah, I was, I, I was terrified. But once I, you know, re- regained my nerves, I, I had to get into karate mode. Because in, in all the karate modes, movies, the teacher must someday beat the master to become the master. Mm. And I won a lot of bets when I asked people who's the last guy to beat Michael Jordan in the playoff situation. That a boy. Yes. So, <laughs> that a boy. I mean, but the, he, he's the greatest. But, you know, LeBron will pass up Kareem, and I can't wait to, you know, hear hear everybody's opinion. Dave, there was an uh, interview with Scottie Pippen in 2021 where they asked him how he wanted to be remembered, and he said, the greatest ever. Do you have any thoughts on Pippen saying something like that? No. I mean, listen, we all think that we're the greatest ever. Got it. But if you ask me how do I want to be remembered, just want people to say Shaq was a nice guy. With nothing else matters. Not one, on the court. One of my uh, one of my favorite quotes that Dwayne Johnson says is, uh, "It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice." And and I I totally agree. I totally love it. It's really cool sitting here and listening 
to you talk about what you were chasing when you were back in you know NBA the competitive days. And I'm curious now as you sit up here in really comfy shoes, pajamas, and a t-shirt, what are you chasing now? 2022, you've done it all. I want to become a sex symbol. <laughs> We actually wanted to talk to you about that. No, I, <laughs> we wanted to talk to you. We about want to that. manage your OnlyFans page. So, so I've been I've been working out, and I posted a pic a couple weeks ago, and it went viral. Oh yeah. I was like, man. So I've been really, really working what, out. What kind of pic? Like explicit? No, no. Sh shirtless pic. Hell yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, that one. That was Photoshop, yeah. eh? But I seen this picture. No, 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 it had, it had, he had like. You know what? A, I'm not gonna. You, know, you have a six pack. I'm not gonna even talk to you today because I'm gonna show him. Go ahead, keep talking. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I have a funny story. Uh, uh, go ahead. It's not a story. It's a, it's a prompt. I'm gonna show him this video that I did this morning, and you tell me if it's a six pack. Okay. Go ahead. Keep asking questions. Don't touch my phone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the photo. It looks photoshopped. Well, did you have to be naked? Like, could you? Just, <laughs> hold on, hold on. He said this sex is, symbol. When you say yes or no, it's real. Yeah, this is just me this morning messing around here. Come watch. Go ahead, keep talking. Me? Yeah, no, them. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell what, them what you see. Can you, see, you big explain dog. what you're seeing, George? Uh, something, like, it looks like he's from the Avengers right now, bro. Like, this guy is. It's a deep fake. Oh, this is not Photoshop. It's oh, a deep fake. It's not Photoshop. Stop it. That's a man. movie, bro. Yeah, you see that? Today. Yeah, but I, I also know today. you're. No, it ain't fun. Nope, you don't know nothing. Yo, he found out <laughs> he's been deep fake solid. technology. Nope, AI same, same deep fake technology. Yeah, he put a six Could you airdrop that to me? Tell them what you see. <laughs> tell me what you see. No, but I, so I, I had like a little four pack, so I'm. I'm no, that was like a six to, pack. Don't be humble. Don't be I like humble. To, I like to create crazy motivating for, so I want to, because I was looking at myself and I had that Charles Barkley retirement body. <laughs> right? And I didn't want to, I didn't want my stomach to be over the belt anymore. So I was just like, let me go ahead and get slammed. But after that thing went viral, now I have to live up to it. So I'm a, now I was 401 pounds, now I'm 365. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm trying to take it back to 345. And I want to have muscles everywhere, and I want to do an underwear ad with my sons. Do you know what brand? Fruit of the Looms, baby. Nice, nice, that's funny. Uh, what the hell is that? Why is it's a my cat. producer call it? Call He's literally a cat. Jeez. I've never seen Dylan actually be more like a cat than in that moment. I swear to God, this guy just army crawled across the floor on all fours. Jeez, what are you doing? Young lady in the front. You came up to me. Uh, would you, can you come up here for this for this prompt? Uh, uh, she came up to me. I was here doing a, a, a little presentation earlier, and she showed me a photo, a photo that she had, and I, I want you to show you, Shaq. You want me to yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you, why don't you come in front right here? And and then here, come come right here. And uh, hello, how are you? I know it might be a little I awkward, but sh show Shaq what you have. Okay, so 1999, you and me at the Denver Zoo. <laughs> She was, she was like, and we also have the same birthday and I DM you on Instagram almost every year. And I'm like, Hey Shaq, happy birthday. We have the same birthday. This is a pic of us at the Denver Zoo in 1999. This and is a pic of us. Talked. Do you remember that? <laughs> I don't remember the pic. When I was <laughs> here, 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 show the camera. <laughs> That'd be weird if he was like, yeah, actually it was a Tuesday. No, put it, of course <laughs> so I have a, I'm doing, I'm doing research every time I go to the zoo. Yeah, for what? For what? <laughs> Don't laugh, but it's a true story. Don't move, whatever I do. So every every zoo that I went to in the world, all the gorillas look at me and they go crazy. You can laugh, it's okay. Are you serious? Yeah, so don't move. So I'll go up to them and like I'll mess with them and like they all come to the glass and they all do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every zoo in the world. Like they just go crazy, they just go to glass and go. So, Did you say gorillas? Huh? Which, which animal did you say? The gorillas. That's where we met. The, See? It was in front uh -huh. You met See? at the gorillas. Yes, I'm I told you. I'm telling you. Yes. It's, it's just like, so every city, every zoo, and they all, so they have this one albino gorilla in Philly. He almost broke the damn glass and got out. His name was Joey. And when he stood up, he was like nine feet nine. If he did break out. I would have ran my ass off. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not fighting. Listen, I'm 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 tough and all, but I'm not gonna fight no gorilla. I don't I don't know. I, I you could I feel like you could take a gorilla, man. No, I cannot. <laughs> you ever seen a shaved a shaved ape? Yes. One of the strongest things animals I've ever seen. It looks like him. Just so, about if, if the ape did crack and was bald. Just about, yeah. No, those things. No, but I, listen, I, I like going to the zoo. How old are you now? 
I'm 29 now, but that, that makes was. You feel so old. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on stage. Yes, thank you. March 6th. All right. Happy birthday. Did she say March 6th? Yeah, March 6th. Yep, that's my birthday. There's the cat. Um, okay, so so uh, before we wrap up here, I'm sure someone in the audience yeah, has sure. a question. I love the live Q&As. It's one of the coolest things we get to do. Have I met you before? You look familiar, sir. Up yes. front? I've never met you before. Were you at the zoo in 99? <laughs> <laughs> look familiar. Does, that, does anyone have a question for Shaq? Surely someone wants to say something. I never forget a pretty face, sir. <laughs> Wow, you, you there we go. Shit. Question over you here. You are the right well, side. Well, I mean, look how he was treating me, and I had a microphone. Do you think they want to get the mic now? <laughs> I got one for you, Shaq. So my daughter, she's 14, freshman, playing AAU club ball. What kind of advice would you give her growing up, especially now that women's basketball is even getting more competitive with everything Kobe had going on and whatnot? So as she's trying to fight and make a spot, what kind of advice would you give, give her? One, have fun. Two, is no pressure. Three, enjoy it. I see a lot of parents when they get kids that are freshman phenoms, they, they push them a little too hard and they don't realize that you still gotta be a sophomore, still gotta be a junior, still gotta be a senior. So just, you know, encourage her, you know, don't really put too much stress on being good at 14. Like I never wanted my kids to be really good at 14. I used to hold them back. The mom just said, no, 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 I'm like, no, just, just, just wait. I think they're at a pretty good level now. They have a lot of room to, to go. But listen, she's 14. She's a girl. Let her be a girl. Let her hang out. Uh, teach her how to be a leader. And, you know, just uh, encourage her as, as, as much as you can. Another, que Ooh, another question over here. Hi, Jack. Um, my name is Marissa. Over here. Hi. <laughs> um, thank you for being here. This is awesome. Thanks for letting us be a part of this. But you grew up with a kind of a strict dad that, you know, didn't let you get away with much. How do you feel about kids and parents today that really, I feel, I don't have kids, but I see, don't really have a lot of, um, they want to be more their friend than their parent. And how do you see, like, that generation and the next generation? You know, I don't want to sit up here like I'm a parenting expert, but the way my parents raised me, worked for me. The way I raise my children, it works for them. Never been in the position to say, you should do this, you should do that. Can always offer advice. I kind of wanted to be my kids' friends also because I was gone a lot. So when I come home, I didn't want to be the bad guy all the time. So I would have to mix it up on when I get upset and when I didn't get upset. So when my kids were little, the way I get, got upset, I would I would act like a dog man and I chase him around the house. <laughs> so it was just, you know, I'm kind That's of, terrifying. You know, you know, As so a grown up, you know, he like, looked right at you. you know, I'd be like, I'd be like, I got a call from your teacher. You didn't pay attention in class. You got three seconds to run. And they start Arr! and I get him. You gonna pay attention in class? Arr! So I, I had to be a little bit more of the friend. So you know, to to each his own. And you know, the, the rules have definitely changed. You, you can't do the things that happened to me and you, but. You know, I, got, I still see a lot of parents doing wonderful things out there. Question right here in the middle. I'm uh, Jimmy Gutierrez, the mayor, or orange shirt to some people up on the stage, Attaboy. but the hype man. I had a question. Um, I had an opportunity to take my kids to your, uh, on their 21st birthday, see you playing at Encore. Um, what was, what's behind the whole DJ thing? By the way, you tore up the stage. It was Thank insane. You. I appreciate it. Had a so, fun time. Diesel. So uh, DJ, I'm just curious. Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> so diesel. From, for sure. So from 15 through to 40, an hour, once, twice, three times a week, I would get an adrenaline boost from you all, from the fans. And again, going back to my father, he took me to a game one time. It was a terrible game, and we were riding the car, and he says, if you ever make it to this level, make sure you put on the performance for people that pay that money to watch you perform. So whenever I played, I always took pride in that. And like, I needed that. Like I would have to come in the arena sometimes and I didn't feel like playing and see this man and his beautiful wife or father and son or family who come to watch me play, little kids with the Shaq jersey. Now I know I got to step up for them. Mm. Now I know I got to play hard for them. So. You know, I went to this concert one time, there was 500,000 people there. Because after I retired in 2011, it kind of went, I didn't have anything. Like, I'd get, a, I'd get the adrenaline boost a little bit, but, 
you know, I went to this concert, it was half a million people there, and it just entered my body again. So then I was like, you know what, I've been DJing in high school and college, let me do it. So that that hour when I DJ, you know, just reminds me of a game seven. That and you all, you also get to spend a lot of that time with with your son Miles, who helped put this together. A friend of mine. Yes. What's it What's it like to be out there uh, doing something that you love with with your son like that? He watched me do it, and you know he he didn't ask for my help, which I love and respect because you know he, he wants to be respected out there. He started from the bottom, just just like I did. And I've been DJing since the eighties, but you know when I entered the DJ world, I had to do. Not to start from the bottom, which is cool. So, you know, I just get a call one day and say, hey, man, your son wants to DJ. And I'm like, what? He's a DJ? Like, I didn't even know he was doing it. But, you know, I bought him the equipment when he was 11, 12, and I used to see him practice it. I never helped him out, but very, very proud of him. Your ability to pivot is is phenomenal. And it makes sense now hearing that you've DJed in the past before, because when I saw you DJ for the first time in uh, Austin. Yeah, in Austin, at yeah. F1. Yes. I mean, you know, celebrities like, just turn DJs. I know you didn't just call me the C word. You don't. Th- you don't think you're a celebrity? No, I denounced myself from being a celebrity three years ago. Excuse my French. Sexy. I, I missed no, that, no, I missed that no, announcement. No, I'm gonna tell you why. Because celebrities are assholes. They are. They're rude. They're obnoxious. They're arrogant. And I'm not like that. What's the What's the title? I'm just a regular guy. As you see, I came in here by myself. No entourage. No security. Not throwing people around. I mean, I don't know if you need security. A lot of people. <laughs> A lot of people, when they get certain stuff, they think that because I have this, I'm better than you. But I'm no better than you. I'm no better than you. So I'm, I'm a guy that was raised on an army base. I, I live a great life, but it doesn't make me better than you. So I don't walk around and act like I'm better than you. So celebrities, they're doing a lot of crazy stuff. I don't want to be involved in that. Hmm. I want to be a regular guy. I drive a Dodge Charger, Hellcat, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. 700 HP. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just a regular guy. So. You know, when, when they call us a celebrity DJ, I actually took offense to that. I was like, oh, you think I'm a celebrity DJ? Okay, so it's like, because I'm, I'm the type, I've been getting criticized my whole life. When I get criticized, I don't cry and whimper. I just step up. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Okay, no problem. So when they called us a celebrity DJ, we just had to step up. And now they call me the dubstep dad. No way. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you're very good is what I was going to say. Thank you, you sir. You aren't, you aren't the celebrity Thank DJ. Thank you. You're absolutely right. Like, I cannot believe you fit in the Charger. I do. I can't believe he fits in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> Two more questions. Back here. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Hi, right here. Christian, Christian Morja. I, uh, two, a statement and then a question. One, in 1989, I saw you in the drum, San Antonio Cole, play in the high school state basketball championship. I always wanted to get to the drum. I never got there, but I was 13 years old then, and I, it was uh, 3A, right? So yes. not the biggest school in Texas. And, uh, it was one of the most amazing things I ever saw, but that was awesome. But I'm a Kobe guy, grew up being a Kobe guy. Um, I know you guys, I, I've watched every documentary, I've seen it all, seen you talk about it a thousand times. Um, but that beef or whatever that story that you guys went through, the world, um, how true is it and, and what is the world? What it, the world likes to, sorry to cut you off, but I, I know where you're going this. The world likes to portray it as beef. But what I like about you and your brother, I see you guys argue all the time, but at the end, the respect is there. Mm-hmm. That's why y'all are close. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? 100%. So he is who he is, I am who I am. We used to butt heads, but you can never lose respect. Mm-hmm. So me being the leader of the team, I knew what I had. I used to mess with him all the time. Because I already know I'm giving you 28, 29, 30, 40. Now I got to get him to give me that because I could never do it by myself. It had to be a one-two punch. So we would go back and forth. But if you look at all the documentaries, the first championship is 20,000 people in the arena. And I go and put my hand up like this and the, and, the, and, the, and the floor opens up. And who's the first person to jump tomorrow? Kobe Bryant. So as the big brother, sometimes you have to push buttons. As the leader, sometimes you have to push buttons. I feel that. You know, when you're a leader, you either focus on the relationship or you focus on the task. And studies show sometimes when you focus on the relationship, the task dwindles. Sometimes when you focus on the task, the relationship dwindles. I'm a task-driven leader. I got to win the championship because if we lose, they're coming at me. Mm-hmm. You miss this many free throws, you're rapping, you're doing movies. So I got to do whatever I got to do, push all the buttons and make everybody perform at a high level. 
So it wasn't really beef. It was just, you know, disagreement sometimes because he wanted to shoot all the time and I said, no, you need to pass it to me all the time. So it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't that, it, that it was beef. And then, you know, because like there's, there's arguments and, you know, there's tussles, but it, it, would, never, it would never spill over to real life because I would never let it spill over to real life because, you know, at the end of the day, I got to go home to my children and go home to your children. If I see you out, it's not like I'm going to beat you up in front of your kids. So... It was just uh, in the workplace disagreements, and I'm sure you guys have them here all the time, but you guys are at the top because of a reason, so the respect was still there. Like, I saw you and your brother fighting one time, and at the end of the night, you guys were together. I was like, those guys are close. Yeah. Those guys are close. It, he's my brother, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, there, there have been times in my life where the, the saying was, I don't, I don't like my brother, but I love my brother. Yes. And I feel like that about Mike a lot, actually. Uh, actually, I don't even like Mike. I don't know why he's here. He's the one I think he's going to I don't like this guy. We need to switch chairs. He's just sitting here doing this all night. <laughs> why would you guys switch and then leave? I'm just kidding. I couldn't. No, he's just, I couldn't just do sitting do here show. doing this all night. <laughs> I couldn't do the show without these guys. I love you, Mike. I, I didn't I mean what I said earlier just now. I know that. Do we have one more question? Yeah, final question over here on this side of the room. Here we go. <laughs> he's so excited, dude. Love Hi, my name is Aaron Neely. And I'm a huge basketball fan, so I have to ask this. Out of all of the teams that you played for, what was your favorite team and why? Probably the Lakers, because when Phil Jackson came, he, he, he allowed us, well, he taught us to get over the hump. And after we got over the hump, we just knocked off three straight. And then Miami would be my second team. But you know, just having the opportunity, especially as a high-level juvenile delinquent, to fulfill my dream and play in the NBA was, was great. But my favorite team would probably be the Lakers. All right, well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. No, honestly, Shaq, that was awesome. We appreciate you for giving us your time and energy. Glad we found you that? Water? the podcast. Say again? That's water? This is a, a hydration beverage. It, it's, it has okay. coconut water in it, yeah. Why? Because we're in competition now. I don't think we are. I went back and forth with your team on this. Okay, well. I, I really I'm, don't I'm, think I'm, we are. I'm, Complimentary. No, tell me, it's 88 alkaline, right? No, it's alkaline 88. And, uh, alkaline eighty, because it's And if 8. I see 8. that in the store, I'm going to just buy it and just throw it away so my shit can sit there. <laughs> as long as you're getting us the dollars, brother. <laughs> All right, good luck with that, brother. Right, thank you, guys. Shaquille O'Neal, ladies and gentlemen. We love you guys. You're the best thank distributors you. in the world. And the best audience And the best audience ever, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, thank you for watching this episode of Impulse. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Peace. You, um, can I get one of those Meta Moon things? Hey, I don't know if you know this, but we're actually on a podcast. Hey, also, I don't like, know if you, you know, I don't know if you know this, but like, I think I need to get kicked off this podcast. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> like, like, like even I, down. even even my shirt. Whoa, nice, nice, catch. nice catch. What's what's wrong with my shirt? No, I said you pull got down because your little fucking your belly done lap over, over your belt. Over the top, my belly button. Yeah, my belly button. Yeah, no, no, nothing more embarrassing could happen to me today. Not like one of the greatest basketball players shitting on me in front of a group of first of all i want what everybody talk about you I, call me jeffrey dahmer excuse me you are you told me i looked like a monkey I, hey, listen a gorilla. Well, listen you guys had all the time to talk shut the fuck up for two seconds oh, now so i can please talk. paint this fucking picture <laughs> one you know when i found out that it was live when i got the fuck on stage i turn around and i see all these people i go uh homie uh, <laughs> homie it's been in the group chat no as i looked back i even typed the word live it wasn't in the group chat <laughs> so fuck you guys it's not live okay, no it's not live that no, might not be the keyword live? there's no. Fucking 400 the people The keyword may have been audience. I'm not done. Distributors. Second, they're like, by the way, you're going to need to wear headphones. Never wore headphones. By the way, why wear the headphones? Not hey. even plugged in. Hey. Not even plugged in. Hey. This is what I saw Shaq doing. <laughs> <laughs> the whole fucking time. And then he got mad. I knew he was mad at me. Not because he said it. Because he was like, <laughs> boom, boom. And then he starts hitting me. And I'm like, oh, I think he's talking to me. Oh, he was poking you real hard there. No, like I didn't know he was even there. talking to me. I went like this. You know how embarrassing that was? I'm from I'm from Phoenix. Hey, shut up. That's our own producer. That's our own producer. You're screaming into a mic. What is this, a Bon Jovi concert? Shut it. Shut your mouth, cat. Shut your freaking yap. <laughs> George, you got you to gotta be versatile. You can't just come up here saying, it was a live show. I didn't know. I can't hear anything. I'm deaf. I'm blind. I'm stupid. We know all that. First, <laughs> but just say I, something I, to the guy. I had... Nothing. You, you could yeah, ask you about did. Jesus. Shaq, or, or <laughs> I did bring up about Jesus. You wasn't very happy. About no, it. you should have said, "What was your What was your free throw joke?" The, uh, not free throw joke. I said, "I've heard of David and Goliath." There was a giant. No, joke. no, no, no. You said something to me that you didn't say to Shaq. Oh, I said, "Who taught you how to throw, <laughs> throw free throws?" I was, actually was gonna say, "What does your dad think about your free throws?" But then I was like, <laughs> "Maybe, 
Maybe that's a little bit too much. You know what? I'm not going to lie. I, everybody needs to fit their description. I'm the type that could talk shit when you're not around. I feel super safe. When you're not around, I'll talk all the shit. It if is much here, easier. here, not the same. I also, I also like that you do that and like clam up because that's what the normal person would do. That's what the average person would no, do. No, I didn't clam up, bro. I, I've learned my lesson on this podcast. If I, if I have nothing valid to say or interrupt the flow, it's terrible. Very smart. So if I couldn't hear what was going on, this is a double Dutch game. So if I would have thought I said something but ruined it, like, and ruin the flow of this conversation, it, it would have been better for me to take the back seat. And it did. Me and him bonded. He bruised my arm for poking it. Buddy, a few let, times. Me, let me tell you something. If anybody on this stage right now ruined that podcast, it wasn't you. Yeah, Logan, what the fuck was that? Bro, I, I didn't show up. Today. Okay, I'm I got to ask. No, no, stop. No, 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 that's no, not why. It wasn't about showing up. No, Mike, please tell no, me I what I I I'm going to keep talking, but it means shut up. I didn't feel I'm not saying anything that means to the guy. Shut up, George. You got to say stuff that means nothing, and then you stop out of nowhere. 100% me. I did it. I don't know if it was lack of sleep, but homie just... A quarter of the way through the podcast says, thanks for showing up today, Shaq. We really enjoyed your presence. I'm such Dog, a moron. We were 10 minutes in. I'm such a moron. Why did you end the show I then? Know. So, guys, we, we we ended the show. We all went backstage, and they were like, yo, what? 30 minutes in, you ended the show. Like, I thought we started at 3, and when I looked at my phone, it was 4. So I was like, oh, we'd be going an hour. What but was different about this podcast, though? I'll tell you. One, it's fucking Shaq. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's not... He's not incredibly easy to in to interview. All right, now and then two, the live audience as a whole other th uh, thing because, in my opinion, if it's not just us, like I'll come up here and be explicit and vulnerable about 100%. me and my life, whatever. But I do want to be respectful of him, and and I'm afraid to ask you know questions that we well, may want to ask well, on the podcast ask because there's 200 fucking 50 people watching. We were gonna ask Shaq how big his dick was because his shoes are so big. We we're gonna ask him, yo, well, and right when he said he was wanted to be a sex symbol, I thought to myself, now's the time. You wear a size 25 <clears throat> shoe, do you have a size 25 cock? But then there's <clears throat> fucking little Miss Susie distributor from Anheuser yeah. Busch sitting in row one looking at me like, my daughter's gonna watch this episode. <laughs> I'm like, All right, okay. fuck this shit. Dude. Uh, do you guys want me to tell you what was on the like the video? Because he kept saying like, describe it for them. Yeah, like, what was the video? Bro, it was, I'm not kidding. It's like, it's, he had a bookshelf that was a hidden bookshelf. Yeah. Somebody pulled the book, opened up the bookshelf. Okay. Now it's a huge other room, which was amazing. And then he comes around the corner, <laughs> literally no socks, nothing but bright, bright blue underwear. Could you see the print? Oh, he, yeah. It, like, what's it looking like? Dog's hung, bro. Really? Like, it's like, be, hey, like, <laughs> he's like, tell him what you see. And I could not get my eyes off of just, yeah. he was just walking. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you, oh, like, that's, that should be illegal. Like, you, you, you know what should be illegal? What? The fact that he was married to a woman who was under five foot. Nah, he was married see, to Ayla nah, because I'm not even kidding. Bro. Not like same Because size, his bro. dick is like barely under no, no, five no, foot. No, 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 no. Look up a picture of Shaq and his wife. She was short. No, she was short in the picture. She was probably taller than me. Uh, no, no, no. I think she. I think she's short, short. I, I, I don't even see like anatomically how that. How well, that anyways, could... I didn't even finish. So he comes around the corner, and I'm like, "Wow, Shaq is literally on the show right now, showing me him in his underwear." And I was like, "This is a pretty cool." I moment. thought it was gonna be like a Jeffrey Star moment where, like, Jeffrey Star fully showed us picture of him sucking a professional NFL athlete's player dick yeah. on a plane. I, mean, I thought for sure Shaq was gonna show you a video of him fucking. Fuck but but the thing about him is he's like this like super in demand dude. He, we, we jumped through fucking rings of fire to get him on the podcast for an hour. And he comes here and he's like, you got an hour of my time. And like 26 minutes go by. And Logan pulls the reverse Uno on him and goes, yo, Shaq, thanks for coming to join us for 12 minutes. That's all we got for you today. I've made get the fuck out of here. Shaq looked at us like this, like, what's good, bro? I know. I made an error. And I, I want to apologize to the audience. I'll take this time now to uh, say I'm sorry. I don't really feel like myself today. It's fine. By the way, George did get a signature of Shaq. Going Shaq to the Jersey. Impulsive Museum, baby. And yep. he was such a sweet guy, dude. He was like, hey, man, I really like the way that you can take jokes. He goes, I leaned on you. He goes, but I, re I, he goes, I like that. And then we talked about the dad thing. But I got to say what Milton did because Milton is like <laughs> Logan's coach. And this guy, first of all, before we even went, we went to go get pizza and he's, he's chilling with 14 Indian old women. <laughs> Literally. They're standing like, they're in the like what are you mean? What are you What are you doing here? And he's like, no, if you want a picture, take it with them. Like, no, no. And he I'm just like, kept walking. I was like, yeah, we didn't even want that. We want to sit. I'm like, this guy, is a, he's this cartoon. But Shaq comes out and he pulls out this walkie talkie from his fucking 
pocket. Okay. Goes, Boys, I'm ready. And just a fucking sh- like I'm talking like Secret Service comes no out shot. of nowhere. What are you talking he about? He said he came here He's, with no yeah, one. What? Bro, He's not a celebrity. Bro, <laughs> Boys, I'm ready. Swoop. Then Milt jumps on the opportunity. He goes right this way. I'm not kidding. I want the camera to pan. Exact because this was I, I saw it. this and I, I was like, it. wow, Mel, that was great. Had his camera ready. He goes, Yeah, right this way. W- walks into the room. This is him walking in. He looks at the camera because it's right there, takes a picture, and now he just sits in an empty room and he goes, Am I supposed to be in this? And he goes, nah, I don't know. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. Milton, my boxing coach, escorted Shaq to like he convinced Shaq that he was a member of his team. Literally, Basically. this is all the room. This is the movement. Just this is the movement. Just to get a picture. I watched it. <laughs> I had to uh, I had to ban uh, Milton from taking snaps and videos. You haven't yet. of me? No, no, of me oh. and Jake because he's become a liability online. He he would in the past uh, post our location where we were in real time in foreign strange cities. One time we were being swatted. Someone called us and said, you know, whatever they said to get the, 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 the SWAT team at our house. And Milton thought it would be cool to live stream the whole fucking thing on Instagram. So <laughs> no when, when we found there was a leak from the inside of our camp, we I, I had to, bro, he's live streamed. The beginning of it was our address and a helicopter. in. Like you could see it all in one frame. Like, TMZ what? was there within five minutes, dude. Like And, the and I guarantee when you said Milt what? And he goes, no. What? What? I I am curious though because he loves posting on Instagram and I don't got, know what it is. He got in trouble by another organization that we work with, not to be named, talking to one of the superstars. Get, get really? Like, pictures, yeah. Really? No. What, what, what's, out, do, out. Is, he, is he here? Yeah, he's right there. Oh, no. Should we ask him? And by the ask? way, there's, there's no prompt. To no, no I, I do want to know this. I do want to know this. Jeff, I get straight out. Can, can, can I ask Milton why he loves Snapchatting so much? It's the time. I need to know why he loves posting on Instagram so much. He, the, the new like 60 second story feature came out and he's the biggest fan. Of I just want to let you know, we, we, we move Shaq for this story. Just FYI. No. Could have been another no, we story. Already taking no. full accountability. I messed up. <laughs> I'm kidding. I bro. like I like podcasts with my boys. <laughs> you know, Sha- I, Shaq, I he's just so big. You did that. He's so fucking I big. Can't I, you I, did I panicked. That. I panicked. Hey, to be honest, I, I, nobody's happier than that move because, bro, I was so nervous the whole time, dude. Fucking up in front of people is a scary thing. Fucking Mil- up in front of Shaq. Just, scary thing. There's no need to do. Mil- that. Mil- take a seat. Just sit out. Like you're not a statue. You don't have to hold that thing. Take a seat. Yeah, no, no, I know, I know. I feel you, George, and uh, I, I, I'll apologize again because uh, I, I, oh, I, I apologize for not showing up. Can either. we get a tight of Milton's toes real quick? <laughs> Jake's team says. Jake's team says. <laughs> Jake's team says if they want if if Milton wants to travel with them, it's mandatory that he wears socks and lotion. <laughs> you need lotion right now. <laughs> it's looking like Kevin, looking like Kevin Durant's ankles over here. <laughs> oh my God, dude! No, shut up. Oh my God! I'm pretty sure. I right, right, bring bring that close to your mouth. Oh all right, there you go. All right, all right, can you hear me? Loud How are you not itchy, bro? Loud and clear. Keep sure. that mic close to your mouth. All right, you got your picture with Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> how that how that come about? I asked him when he was walking out the door. Yeah, you just. I saw heard him. You, I heard you escorted him into an empty room. No, 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 no. Escort him. There was no light right there. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't check That's out, brother. He gave me the classic <laughs> redirect. Smoke him here. He just threw a smoke bomb and thought. <laughs> no, no, there's no, no light. I scored him. It was dark in there. What does that mean, That's bro? so funny. Cause, no, I, I understand it now because I watched his face when he was making up his mind. You Wait, you weren't trying to trick him in the room. You were just mad that there was no light there. There was no light. Oh my God, that's so funny! I, I brought you up here to ask you one question. Surprise me! And I've been I've been meaning to ask you this. On nationwide, what is it about posting on your Instagram story <laughs> that you like so much? What do you mean? <laughs> Duh! <laughs> what do you mean? Don't do that! What do you, what mean? you mean? What do I mean? You're one of those guys as. He's a shit As a, poster. A shit poster. Bro, he posts you go, anything. you go to, you go to look at his story, and each bar is this <laughs> fucking big up top, and dots. there's a hundred of them, and each one is uh, twenty seconds long. So I'll ask again. I don't, I don't get it. You, I don't get it. You're <laughs> sixty six years old. You're still actively posting on Instagram, really actively. So what is it that you like about it so much? 
You don't even know. See, this is what confuses me. <laughs> well, you're putting me. him on the spot. Give him a second no, to think of it. I'm just trying to think. Okay. I'm, I just post stuff to be posting it, I guess. No, you're colder than ice. You're, you're cool as a cucumber. Everybody know. knows you're the, you're the thunder from down under. You're the, queen, the legend from Queens. You're the man that won't stop being the man. You're the guy okay. who say some more things that you would call yourself. <laughs> Oh, often imitated, but never duplicated. There you the go. East what else? The East and the best in the West. <laughs> when the ladies next to me, they just get undressed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I just post stuff. I guess I just think of, you know, I don't know. I just post it. Why? Why do I post? You trying to be an influencer? No. Because from this angle, that's what it looks like. You trying to be? I know. I can't be an influencer stuff? because I'm not charging anybody. I'm not charging. Well, you post more than every influencer I know. <laughs> that's not true. Yes, it is. Trust me. No one posts as much as you. Oh, not Mike? even close. You post. Not even close. <laughs> Kevin? Not even remotely no, not close. Kevin. That's why I'm saying. Hey, like, but what I do you don't see why I don't even post that much. Are you freaking me? Oh, uh, let's find out. <laughs> do I post that much? Let's find out. So I'm a, now I'm a poster child for not posting? Let's find out right now. <laughs> you got four stories live on your Instagram right now. Oh, you went to, oh, that's not bad. You went to Overlook LA last night? Oh, that's actually not that bad. I actually I'm respect not really that story. I'm doing anything. No, I'm still just wondering why. You like it. You like it, right? Well, well since I am everywhere, which <laughs> my hat says, so I post stuff where I go and let everybody know, like, hey, I'm here, I'm here. You know, just yeah, so nice. if people who do, oh, if so people, on if, brand. Wait yeah. a minute. If people who can't follow us or y'all around, they follow me wherever I go, knowing, hey, where's he going next? So I figured I am everywhere I post. Do you, do, you, post do you know? Do you, okay, check this out. Because your posting uh, kind of helped me out a little bit recently for the first time. Wow. <laughs> I think I know what that one is. Do you? Yeah. Which one? The Puerto Rico. Story. Puerto Rico. Yeah. Because. Although you did the Puerto Rico thing and you didn't post and you didn't do anything and and we didn't I didn't even post I didn't even post no pictures like hey we're here and then a week later after I it it came out uh, I said you know what maybe I should just put this up because it's a week later it's yeah. behind and and a lot of positive 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 uh, notes came up about like wow. Logan is helping out. Your guys are helping out, and a lot of uh, a lot of big Puerto Rican people kind of reached out and were saying stuff well, like that about you, which was all positive. Well, it, it was interesting because, like, as you know, we know, and I think I, I'm doing an interview with Philip DeFranco this weekend. The, oh, nice. the, the the Puerto Rican sentiment is 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 some people feel a certain way about it, mm -hmm. and I wasn't going to post that on social media, and and you did, and in this video that Philip DeFranco made, That's uh, he was kind he was kind of condemning or or, or, or um, talking about the sentiment of some Puerto Ricans about, you know, me. And, Go home, gringo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and 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 there, he cited a couple tweets of people saying, like, you know, Logan, you're, you're on this island, but what are you doing to help out? And I don't feel the need to have to prove myself, which is why I didn't post anything. And I don't plan on posting anything or, or parading my pursuits around on social media. But the fans had our back and they saw your picture and they were like, yo, f like, Bill, like about they are doing stuff and we've done some stuff too but it, it, it helped me because now I'm he saw the picture and I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down with Philip DeFranco um this weekend and, and talk a little Philly bit about D Philly well D. I, had, I had also let them know I was a Boricua yo I'm Puerto Rican <laughs> I've been working with Logan for five years I'm Puerto Rican so you can't say he ain't doing anything say because I'm here say watching. something else like in that same type of vein like the other things that you say you know what I'm saying? What, what are you talking about, man? No, not like not like that. But <laughs> give you're them Muhammad Ali. Give them Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the greatest of all time. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you, I'm the greatest of all time. I whoop Joan Frazier. I'm about to whoop you. I'm gonna get up here. Let me tell you, I'm so pretty. But when I finish with you, this won't be no joke. Next time they see you, your nose will be broke. Mill <laughs> <laughs> Supreme, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey. Speaking of posting a lot, mm. there's a hot upcoming. New social media platform yeah, that well. people are posting like crazy oh, on. Mill, you would love it. I posted 44 posts already on it today, and I've only been awake for six hours. Yeah. That platform, ladies and gentlemen. You may have heard of it. It's called Snapchat. Snapchat. We're fucking oh, we're Snapchat. We are Snapchatting. Oh my God, bro. Yeah, they have this new uh, creator payout program, and that's probably the reason you're seeing not a me. lot no, of I, your no, I just favorite like, or least favorite influencers. I just like posting. It has nothing to do with the money. Yeah, why would why would you want to make money? <laughs> I got one better. No, it, it, we're talking about something. Okay, I'm sorry. No, Unless, all right, on, say, say a slogan yeah. first and then do it. Like one of your things that you say. I'm too hot to hold, definitely too hard to handle. I set it off like a Roman candle. <laughs> That works. Now okay. say, say what you bet. Okay. 
There's a new platform about to hit the market, which is called and that's going to be the game changer. Yeah, how, how, have you ever said something on a show where the entire <laughs> sentence was bleeped out before? Because that just happened. Did okay, you well, just try to plug? I'm gonna try it, it again. I'm gonna try it again. Yeah, go ahead. No, try, no, try no, no, no. That's what fine. Let him, okay, let him try it again. There's a new, and it's going to be a game changer. <laughs> we even bleeped that just to be safe. Just to be safe. Bro. No, it's Snapchat. So it is. It is funny. So look, mm -hmm. I've been, I've been snapping. Like I am a Snapchatting TikToker again now. And and so has Mike. And and everyone knows that no one wants to see a 37-year-old on Snapchat. But if you do, you can follow Mike. It's hey big Mike. But the thing is about it, it you're you're probably right. But we we do all this really polished content that goes on. Even the even the TikToks are well produced. The YouTube content is obviously pretty, pretty high production. Uh the podcast produced. But when we get a chance to, you know, try to solve a Rubik's Cube or chase each other around the house or like the kind of shit that we do behind the scenes that by the way. A lot of the real, real long-term, long-time uh, audience members mm -hmm. want to see. We, we've been doing it on Snapchat, really. I, I, which is it's uh, interesting. It's, it's cool, it's, bro. It's something I overlooked. I've actually been having fun snapping my day. Like it's, it, I'm bro. As much as it pains me to say this, <laughs> I'm a fucking YouTuber, bro. I'm a daily vlogger. I well, I well, love, I, I am. I love creating. I, Word. I like I like taking videos and pictures of what's going on in my day, posting them, trying to be funny here and there, trying to get creative, exercising my this is so cool to me. It's a gift. I'm exercising my ability to take this device in my hand, record a piece of content and upload it for the entire world to see now. Man, when I was like 10, 11, that, that just wasn't how it was. And it's so cool now that we can do it. And so I'm taking advantage of it. And it's cool. And, you know, they, they're, they're paying a decent amount of money now. If you want to subscribe to my Snapchat, it's at Logan Paul. But <laughs> I remember when you that. were YouTubing, bro. You I was, were a great I was, YouTuber. I was Snapchatting back in the day too. No, but which, I'm which is why, which is why this isn't foreign to me. Like I, I used to Snapchat every single day before the daily vlogs, and then I hopped into, into daily. But the vlogs. daily vlog, like the vlogging, is what made you. I mean, you pe people, you were considered to be one of the greatest YouTubers, and and it's been sad, kind of sad to see your your fall from from glory. And, not um, sad at all. Well, not well, sad well, at all. I no, just no, want no. to just no, throw no, this no, out no, part, no. especially, you know, having been someone who was at one point just an extra in those vlogs and now um, someone who gets more monthly views than you on a consistent basis every single month. I think there's a lot of people that get more views than me monthly. Yeah, but none of those guys are sitting on stage. So it's just, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, just stick strictly based on numbers. <laughs> you're you're going to be statistically higher to have more views than me if you're on this stage because I'm not posting. I, I will say, gonna, hey, listen, no, 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 you listen. listen. No! I posted a YouTube video called I took 4,120 photos oh, yeah, in 99 great days. Video. Great video. It was a summary and a montage compilation, whatever you want to call it, of the originals photos and each story that we put together. I have never gotten better feedback on a video in my life, like mm -hmm. ever. And it's as watch a, time as a creator, watch time, retent everything. As a creator, there's no better feeling than when what you put out gets received positively. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who followed that journey and who commented on the YouTube video. And I, I am humbled that the project was received better than I expected. Because you have to understand, like, w w ironically enough, when we sat at the live show in Ohio... And I announced originals for the first time, and I was talking about this great project, how it, it could be my my magnum opus, and it took me a year to conceptualize it, and it, it was hard for people to understand what I was talking about, right? And even like during the release of the project, some of the photos are fantastic, if I do say so myself. Some aren't, you know. And so we'd get the occasion, like, you know, what what is this project? What are you building? What's happening? And then finally, now. After I've released that video and you can see the arc, the story, the time, the energy uh, and the team that was involved in this project, people are finally seeing what I saw in the first three days of conceptualizing that project. And so, like, I do love YouTube. At the end of the day, man, I love creating and I'm so glad that we have these outlets to, 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 to just sit down, and talk and put out little pieces of us that some people at home can resonate with. And, you, and that wasn't even like even remotely all of it. Those were like little, I mean, bro, you have so much footage. And and back to the thing I said about the the views, I'm obviously playing around, bro. Like you, you, you're one of the fucking goats of YouTube. I, I you know, I, I learned so much from you having watched the fucking daily vlogs and being a part of them. And honestly, it's actually funny because lately you've been seeing all these people that uh, start to sway away from YouTube and move into other pursuits, starting to feel that call back. Casey Neistat. 
back in New York City. Mm. Like, talk about a, a full circle moment for the YouTube community. Casey and I that back in New York City, back vlogging again, shooting vlogs, posting thumbnails, with, you know, just great content. And Emma Chamberlain back again as it's, well it's after so, a long It's cool, break. man. I think there's going to be a little bit of a, a kickback on authentic, personable content. You know, like, we, 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 see, the, we see the beast wave of YouTube and yep. the, 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 yep. the creators that he's inspired to do these Arak. massive larger than life videos. Yep. Uh, Eric, Mr. Beam, uh, are, you know, these guys are killing it. But personally, you know, that's 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 not what I yearn to see. It, I, I like the, the realness. I and like, a lot of people do, obviously. We are to see that. You what? know what I'm saying? A lot of people do want to see it. It's for, of, it's for a lot of people. Correct. It, but not me. Bro, right, I'm 27. Right, right, right. Like, I don't need to, you know, see people competing to win. Right. Car. Like I don't care. I'm just I just love the community. I just love creating that audience of people that actually like for the first time in a in a while I feel like I've I'm I've really uh leaned into a community of people that genuinely care every single week what's going on. And mm. that's that's just an awesome feeling. It's cool to know that like they're following our journey to that to that extent. No, I agree. It's cool. And it's it's really cool <laughs> to see it manifest in these live audiences, which is why we like to do them. Uh last thing, I just want to address it real quick. Uh, you want to talk about this Tua, Tua situation? Yeah, I mean, dude, what a nasty situation. I mean, by the time this episode comes out, it will have been last week. But um, uh, Dolphins quarterback, um, you know, he had, he had, Tua had had a, um, a rough tackle the week before, had gone into concussion protocol, but I guess they made the decision that he was, that he was eligible to play uh, last night, uh, the night before we recorded this podcast, and he took a really nasty hit. Uh, during the game, and it was like it was like a, it was like a slingshot hit where he yeah. got like dragged down, and the back of his head slammed on the ground. Which you know we know from boxing and just anything ever, getting hit in the back of the head is the worst place to get hit, and the first thing that is affected is your vision. Uh, and he kind of he kind of flipped over, and it, it was obvious immediately that there was something dramatically wrong uh, with his with his motor funk with his motor skills, his 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 general function. Yeah, he was throwing up gang signs with his finger. Literally, it was it was, it was, it was hor hor disturbing, horrifying. Carted off the field, and there's been a lot of discussion once again about this CT uh, concussion protocol in the NFL. We we it seemed like there had been a, a, a tremendous amount of pro progress made over the past few years in terms of how serious concussion protocol was. Because they now know that CT is such a major, lifelong, uh, and enduring battle for these people after these head injuries. And so there's the, the Dolphins are under a tremendous amount of scrutiny right now uh, as a result of allowing him to play after after a potential concussion last week. Uh, news coming in today that they're sticking with the, their their uh, medical team is sticking with this this uh, concept or idea that he was he was eligible to play and he was out of concussion protocol and that it was safe for him to play, but. Um, it's a it, it was a really challenging thing to watch and uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how it continues to shape that 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 space so I played football in high school um, I was uh, an all-state linebacker and I gave every bit of me to that fucking high school football team because my to my coach told me to and he convinced me that I was gonna give it all when I went on the field and while that's an amazing mindset to have at life, right? Just attack everything full force. It really hindered my health. I got a concussion one game and I was a linebacker, right? So I have to play or, or, or call the plays. <clears throat> I got hit head to head with a, a running back from Avon Lake. And I, I knew immediately like something was not nor this, this particular hit. Like I would spear guys, this particular hit, like, uh, froze me a bit. So I, I, I stayed on the ground. I was on all fours. I, I went to get up and I went to call the play, which involved counting the linemen and counting the people in the backfield. I didn't know how to count, dog. I didn't know how to count or say words. And, and I have 10 other guys relying on me to call the fucking play. In that moment, I went, oh my God, Horrible. this sport is scary. Now add in everything else I've torn in my life, I'm not sure that I will let my children play football unless they absolutely fucking love it. It is an amazing sport. I love watching That's it, so but oh my gosh, it is so dangerous. That's so funny you say that because I didn't ever expected you to say like, I don't like, I, I could see fear taking over your decisions now um, for your loved ones, yep. which is like, I never thought I would ever see you go through that. Um, but yeah, I wasn't allowed to play football. Um, it's just because of that. It's just such a rough sport, man. I, like I'm not kidding. Every big injury I had that I still feel to this day, both knees pulled, both hip flexors. 
uh, is can be traced back to football. An amazing sport. If you guys are playing football, like I trust me, I love it, right? But oh my gosh, just be careful. Just oh man. Yeah, if you don't love it, you don't risk it. If and also like you could just play like flag football. That's all. Okay. <laughs> or or allocate your energy elsewhere. Like you know, it, it, I remember in high school. There'd be seasons, right, for each sport. There'd be the football season, wrestling season, track season. And I only got to practice the sport that I was playing during the season that we're doing now. We, we wonder why I got, uh, you know, decent at boxing quickly. It's because we, it's all we focused on. In high school, you don't have that luxury, especially when you're sport hopping for the multidisciplinary athletes. So, you know, if I, I, I mean this when I say this. Um, if you don't think you're going to go pro in football, or get a college scholarship, allocate your energy elsewhere. I just think there's too much on the line. It's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, yeah. I, that's just like a trick. It's a tricky thing. Obviously, it's like, it's a, it's clearly an American pastime to play football. In certain states, it's the only thing that fucking matters. I mean, you go Texas. try to, you try, I was going to say, you try to go say that on a stage in Texas, you get fucking t dragged out of there by your feet. No, no, he's, he's meaning uh, that, like, I'm just full, no, no, like, no, no, dedicating your whole life. Out. You know, I've been there, I've been there, we've seen it, we saw it with Tua, and I, mean, I don't, I just don't. Yeah, but there's, I don't you know, but there's a lot of others. Man. I wasn't allowed to play football either, but I was allowed to ride BMX. I was allowed to ski jump. You know what I'm saying? Kids are kids, and they're gonna do, and they're gonna fuck themselves up regardless. Like you're gonna, you, at that age, you want to do things that that test your physical limits. I had, I mean, I can't even tell you on both hands how many concussions I've had. I've been knocked out cold so many. That's the other times. side of the, this this, and obviously it, 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 you could tell to an extent, but it's like you know you can you can. You could take a couple knocks. Clearly, like what happened, to, you know, to Tua was was beyond well, well, what should have well, happened. <laughs> the concussion followed up by a concussion. Uh, that's is the very, problem. very. That's very bad, and that's that's the thing, and that's what's weird about this. Because whenever I would have a concussion when I was a kid, the only thing that mattered was not getting another concussion quickly thereafter, because your 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 brain is swollen. Correct. Mm. Right. So your brain is swollen. You're at high risk of major issues after your first concussion. Do you know so why? Your the swelling in your brain needs to fucking go down. You need to be very careful. So the idea of sending someone back out onto the field to face these 300 pound linebackers after concussion protocol that, you know, is uh, uh, shaded or filtered or obscured by other factors such as desire to win, obviously, money, sponsorships. Uh, coaching decisions that are based on their desire to continue wanting to, be, wanting to be a winning coach so they get paid money. It's a fucked up situation that I thought the NFL had removed a lot of that guesswork from and made it very clear, yo, CTE, concussion protocol, you're benched. Your ass is not fucking playing until you're cleared by multiple independent uh, doctors. And so this seemed strange to me that they allowed this to happen and, and he, you know, he's fucked up. Well, that's because they were having a good season. And they if they keep him in, they're gonna win. Mm -hmm. And since he got out, they lost the next game. And a lot of this, a lot of this is late breaking. And so if we if we misspoke on any specific uh, you know intricacies, I apologize. But I mean, it's 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 a nasty game for sure. Um, okay. Yep. I am gonna tell my producer to stop flirting with my assistant as soon as this podcast Yeah, ends. what's the deal with that? That's dancing. I don't like it. Right. <laughs> oh, wait. Do they work for the same company? No, no. I guess technically. Are you guys having an affair? No. Maybe it's pan to him. She's your what? Pan to him, Caleb. That's your girl. Caleb, just a quick pan. Just a quick pan. Just any, at any moment would be good. Yeah, I don't, I don't like any of this. Oh, you had a I'm date last night? Dude, what do the, I there's mean, some the, there's some coworker affairs going on right we now. We just saw this with a YouTube channel with Ned 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 uh, Declassified. Ned Ned Ned, 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 Ned Ful Filmer Filmman. What is it? Yeah, what's the, the thing called? Guys. The Short the Boys. Try guys. Try guys. Short Boys. The Try Guys guy. It's like the same thing. Apparently, tried he cheated on his wife. Yeah, he tried to stay. He tried guys. He tried guys. <laughs> Wait, he tried guys. Yeah, he cheated on his wife with a guy. With a guy? Yeah, he tried guys. No, no, that's, not he's, that's not true. <laughs> that's, it. that's not true. Let's not putting this. Not put this. <laughs> let's not put this in the wrong. No, no, no. Let's, Wait, so he was let's put he this was, in the wrong. Wait, he was trisexual. <laughs> Elaborate. Hey, that mic's really getting away from okay. me, man. He was trisexual. Hey, um, but but I, you know, what are you what are your thoughts? I was just I was just thinking he. So apparently this guy built his brand around being like a faithful husband. No, and, I'm not and, talking and about partner. that. Fuck that conversation. I'm talking about I actually think it's, a, I think, think it's interesting. You, do, you have, do you have a uh, take on it? Yeah, don't fucking cheat. Sorry. Uh, How easy is it to just not do that? Especially yeah. when you're painting the picture of things being perfect at home. Like you, you've, you've, 
You've built your life. You've built this brand, and it's looking good. You have a wife. See, and I you want to like go cheat on her like with your easy, colleague? Yeah, but I feel like it's easy to say that, dude. Oh, because shut when, the when's wait, last, wait, Mike. Hold on. No, talk to me about your last marriage. Wait, Mike. Talk to me about your last marriage. Talk to me about when you were married to somebody for 26 some odd fucking Yo, years. Figure it out. Antiquated. Figure it out, drive. bro. And every time she fucking looked at you, she said, take the trash out, you piece of shit. Guys, Yo, we get a divorce. Like get a divorce. Know, like Mike. Oh, around. what? They never heard the word vagina before, George? Your fucking Willy Wonk ass stomach is hanging out again. You got Talk that. that fucking thing, I swear to God. I've been happy. I gained a little weight. Your stomach nah, nah, you over good. your you pants. Yeah, it's dumb if that. mine pulled up, bro, you'd <laughs> see fucking Mount Vesuvius popping out of Did my Did you pants. see skin? Yes, that's what I keep telling you. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm sick of these guys cheating. I'm no, sick yes, of seeing. Of course. No, I'm sick of it, bro. Of bro, you know, you know, I seen um uh Emily Radikowski. Yeah, that one I don't. Get. Emily Radikowski. Radikowski. Why, why don't you get that one? Got cheated. She's hot. This could be a no, psychopath. She's not. Hold on a sec. You're right. You're. I, I'm sorry. I was gonna say something, but you're 100. You know what right. I mean? Like, trust I me. Take it from someone that, who. Take how could you someone. cheat? Uh, like, dude, what if she comes home every day and her one thing that she has to do is it's punch you in the nuts and then spit in your face? Dog. Break really? up with her. Yes, for sure. He's oh, like, I would never cheat. No, I'm course, not a cheater. Course. Break up with her. Yeah. No, I don't. I just, I mean this. I'm have a. I'm having a hard time computing what I'm seeing. You have the thing. You you or at least you're painting the picture. And and, and, and I mean Emily Ratajkowski's boyfriend. I'm sorry. You beat. You beat, fam. I don't know who the fuck you think you are to be cheating on a woman like that. But I see these guys do it, and I'm 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 stunned. Like, what the fuck are you thinking? Congratulations, you had it all, son, and you fumbled the. Well, bag. but to no, but to George's point, he's probably he's. You should never cheat. Obviously, you should just leave. But like, maybe he didn't have it all. Maybe to, to you know what I'm saying. I've had very pretty girls in my life in the past that I also have broken up with because we did not get along. And there was issues at home on the home front. Just having a, a pretty face is not the fucking table stakes for a happy relationship these days. It's just not. I, now that I said, I just now that so said, the, 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 the asterisks to, to what you're saying is these weren't short term relationships, guys. These were these were multi year relationships involving two people who. Uh, supposedly loved each other at least enough to be in multi-year relationships. Yeah, they're cheaters. I mean, they're cheaters, bro. Listen, I've never cheated in my fucking life. Not because <clears> I've been in four... What? I did never fucked you, bro. What are you going to say? <laughs> why did you do that? Yeah, why did you do that? That was a pretty uh, No, no, don't say anything. <clears throat> Let him answer. Why'd you do that? I was that? trying to clear up my throat. No, why'd you say that, Mel? Yeah. You never cheated? Never in my life. Never. Nope. I put me on a lie detector right now. Okay. Why? What were you, you going to say? I ain't saying anything. You no, know, no, you no. You never cheated. No, you, you could call Mel. You can call me out right here, right now. On exactly what you're talking about, I won't get mad at you. Okay, Specifically, good. say the You think people. he cheated? No. Then why'd, I, you, then why'd you do this? Is the he talking thing? about the one situation or Maybe, no? because that's the one, the gray area. No, no, about the no. Gray area? no. no. Got Logan, Logan's very specific no, on that one bro, where it's like, I, that wasn't even close. Here, here's, here's why you're seeing such a visceral reaction from me. My family was, was partially broken apart by infidelity when I was growing up. So it hits a little sure. closer to home for me. Same. And even though, though now as an adult, like... I just, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. Wait, I, well, I thought you were going to defend me. What? Yeah, you're defending no, I know you never cheated. Sorry. Oh, no, I, no. Okay. I don't know why. I'm uh, gonna throw no, it because he probably I, was I would, falling on that, that. I don't think so. I think I, he really just wanted to clear his throat. That is not true, dude. <laughs> anyway, you, you, you got a guy right here who. You're going to try guys? <laughs> I'm the guy. No, no, no. <laughs> Mill, you're going to try guys? You, you got a guy right here that's. When he's. In it, he's in it all the way, nonstop. And well, that's what I'm saying. Look, he does not even look the other way. Being around here with you guys, I see everything. Don't say nothing. I'm just, yo, I'm but just. I'm telling you, hands down, who's ever in his path, they stay in his path for a while, and they're staying there. And if he likes him, he is. Listen, definitely listen. This is why I'm saying, I, I it is so easy to not cheat. It is hard to cheat. You have to. You would have to go behind someone's back that you love. Yeah, you have to go no, to someone's disgusting. house or yeah. a location, plan some shit, get physical with them, finish the job, then go home to the person that you think disgusting. that you try. It's, it's disgusting. fucked. It's disgusting. I, I will never understand it. It's a, it's a it's a journey just to cheat. Your, but also, but mind also, it's crazy. But also, it's trying all, to cheat. With no, no, whoever. no. You know what? You know what? You know what? The times where I can have a little bit more empathy towards the situation is um, 
emotionally abusive relationships, physically abusive relationships. Who the fuck am I to to sit here and judge what people do with their lives, right? Well, but, outliers. But yeah. I, I I I just in this particular subject, I do feel strongly that um just cheating's not okay. That's that's what we're going to end this weird fucking podcast. What the fuck was this podcast? <laughs> hey, guys, remember when uh, Shaquille O'Neal was on this podcast? That was today, right? Yeah, that was today. By the way, there's a tie in there. Oh, oh but whatever. No, I'm not. No, 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 he just he, read the, he, he just was, read, he was just, a serial cheater. And the quote was, I did it and I was the best at it. I'm not proud. I lost my family doing it. I lost valuable, important years of my children from doing it. So I refuse to get up here. You shouldn't have did, did this. You shouldn't have did that. I'm not that guy. I'm real with the situation. It was not worth it. But let me tell you why. The happiest days of my life were coming home and hearing six different people say, daddy, daddy, daddy. The happiest days of my life. Forget the money. Forget the cars. Even forget the championships. Especially when the children were little. And two or three came up and he, he missed 15 free throws or whatever. They'd wait for him at the games and say, daddy, when can we go to Universal? Um, I, I butchered this. <laughs> I absolutely butcher butcher this. It's the way you quote. said the way you said it's that last part was it was absolutely funny. butchered it. When I lost that by being stupid, it killed me. So to answer your question, no, it's not worth it. Unless she got a fat ass, bro. <laughs> 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 welcome, welcome to this episode of Impulsive. Welcome to Impulsive. See you next time. Bye. Welcome. <laughs>